Hey guys, we are so glad you're here with us at Journey Church Online. If you're interested in getting more information about Journey Church, we have a messaging service where you can text the phrase, my welcome to 94,000. This will help you get to know a little bit more about Journey Church. Also, if you want updates texted to your phone about what's going on here at Journey Church, please text the phrase, my journey to 94,000. As we get ready for today's message, take a minute and share this video with someone. The small action of sharing this video on social media could be the start of life change for whoever sees it. All right. Good morning, church. You guys doing well? All right. Good. Uh, good morning online. You know, we've been uh, live the last couple of weeks, and so if you're online, we're so glad you're joining us. Today, uh, we're doing a message called uh, Making the Most of the Moment. You know, we, uh, we have opportunities in life, and there's things that pop up sometimes, and how do you make the most of that moment? For you, maybe, maybe the worship today was a moment. Uh, maybe it was a time to maybe just let go and kind of let God kind of speak to you, minister to you through the, through the songs or through the words of uh, that, that song. This past, uh, the past couple of weeks, I had an opportunity to go on a, on a hunt. It was a pheasant hunt, and uh, Compassion International, Matt Wilson with Compassion International contacted me a few months ago, and he said, hey, listen... He goes, would you be interested in going on a, a pheasant hunt? And I was like, yes. And he go, I said, how much is it? He goes, won't cost you a dime. I was like, yes, I'm real interested, man. I'm all in that. And uh, so Compassion International and Fellowship Adventures kind of com uh, combined to take about 16 pastors out to uh, Platt, uh, South Dakota on an incredible pheasant hunt. And uh, so here's a picture of it. You can see the group of guys there. It's kind of a motley crew, but man, we had a good, good time and it was, it was a lot of fun. But the thing about it was, it was an experience. And I don't know if you've ever had a, like a really cool experience, but this is what this was. And so uh, we, uh, that, that you could tell that both groups, Compassion International and Fellowship Adventures, had put a lot of thought into, hey, how do we make this an experience for these pastors? And one of the very first things we did there is we, we went and we saw this, uh, this incredible view overlooking the Missouri River there. It was a sunset. And so they had these chairs set up, and we kind of gather around and we sit there, and everybody's just kind of just in awe of the beauty of the land, God's creation, you know, and just sitting there able to worship, you know, and just it's a moment, you know, and so Pat, well, a lot of us didn't know each other. I knew three or four of the guys, but I didn't know all of them, and so it was a moment to kind of meet each other a little bit, kind of talk a little bit, and uh, just to see God's creation, just to take it in, and too often, you know, what, what happens is we don't make the most of a moment like that. We're, we're in too much of a rush, and I don't know about you, but there's times that I'm, I'm, I'm too busy. And we've got to learn how to make the most of these moments. And so that's what I want us to talk about today. And there's a passage here that, is, that kind of speaks to us. It says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. So we're to, we're to become wise. You know, hopefully we realize, you know, we're, we're not going to be here forever. We're passing through this land. And I hope you guys understand that, you know, I know a lot of times we think this is the all in all. It's not. We're here for a little while. You know, it's, a, it's like a, the Bible says, like a vapor our life is but a vapor and so we are here to literally learn how to love God to hear the gospel to respond by faith to learn how to love people you know and so and here, we're here to learn a lot and so hopefully we grow in wisdom and part of that wisdom is us learning to make the most of the moment to be intentional about making the most of the moment here's the thing this year has been crazy so uncertainty let me throw this up there uncertainty can be one of those things that can kind of wig you out. Uncertainty can be a ferocious devourer of, devourer of peace. And so 2020 is a year like no other. We know that, right? We've heard it. Um, it's just been crazy. And if anything's going to happen, it's going to be this year. I mean, Alabama's making field goals. That, that'll tell you something right there. It's, it's a crazy year. And, uh, and so, but so the uncertainty, though, it can devour the peace that we think we have. And so uncertainty is a year that we have experienced. This is what this, this has been. And so we have to be careful that we don't miss things in these moments because the uncertainty will rob us of the peace and even rob us of the moments. And so a lot of people, you know, some of you, maybe you're thinking that 2020 can't get over fast enough. But what, you know, what can we look back in and learn from 2020? And I thought about, you know, some of the things that I saw, you know, whenever all this came out, people are like, they're shutting the nation down. They're shutting all this down. You know, uh, you can't leave, you can't do this. I mean, there was a lot that people were uncertain about. And so, it, like I said, it robbed some people of peace. Here's another thing. It, it can, it, fear can paralyze us. And for a lot of people, it was a very scary time. For many of you, it still is. You know, I, I'm one of those where 
I, I struggle with the, the rules and the guidelines because even like walking in, I, I shook two guys' hands, and I apologize for that if, uh, if I broke protocol there. And then I thought, hey, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing that, so I started doing knuckles. And, uh, and, and so I'm one of those where I want to hug people. You know, it's one of those things that's not about me. So the reason I don't do those things is because I think about the people around me. I, wanna, I want them to be good. And, uh, but fear can paralyze you. And, and maybe you've experienced that. And, you know, all of a sudden you realize, you know, hey, man, I'm afraid of what the unknown. But what I watched happen during the, you know, the, the quarantines and the shutdowns and stuff, I watched people doing things they hadn't done in a long time. They were sitting around the table having meals together. You know, they were learning, they were learning to eat as a family. They were learning to, to maybe do some things. I saw dogs get walked that have never been walked. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was unbelievable. Those dogs were like, man, this is awesome. I love it. You know, and so there were people out walking dogs that I'd never, I didn't know they had a dog, you know. And so it was unbelievable how many people were out walking together as families. You know, husbands and wives were walking together. And, and so we, we might look back and say, hey, man, it was uncertain. It was, it was fearful. But, man, we also experienced some things. And maybe I think, maybe it took a few weeks, a couple of weeks to realize, you know what, hey, this is a moment. We may never have again. And so here's, here's another thing that can happen. Worry can drown, drown out the blessings. We can get so worried about things that we, we forget to count our blessings. We forget to look around and see things. And so worry can, can build up. It can become like a dark cloud in your mind to where, I mean, you're worried about everything. The Bible says not to worry about everything. It says pray about everything, right? And, and so we can get worried to the point of where we're not, we're not focused on the blessings in our life. We're worried about tomorrow. We're worried about things that really we shouldn't be worried about. And here's the last one. Being too driven can cause us to miss special moments as well. So worry, fear, uncertainty, all those things can rob us of life and, and enjoying the brevity of life and enjoying, you know, uh, these opportunities. And so being too driven, oftentimes, you know, we're so focused on what's down the road that we forget to enjoy what's right around us. You know, we can be so driven that we think, you know, I've got to get there I've got to accomplish this. I've got to accomplish that. And so the drive, and I, and I love somebody being driven. I love somebody with an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial men, mentality where they're thinking about new ways of doing things. And, and so I love that, that, that about people, but I don't like for us to be so driven that we can't enjoy the moment. And I'm one of those. I'm so, sometimes I'm so focused on what's down the road that I don't enjoy the moment. And so today's message is much for me as it is for any of you. And I would, I would just say this, maybe you're that person. You say, God, I don't want to be so focused on uncertainty. I don't want to focus on fear. I don't want to live by fear. I want to, I want to walk in power and a, a sound mind. God, I want to walk in your truth. And so too often, like I said, we get focused on those things. And we miss these moments that are around us. We, you know, I saw someone this past week. They posted a picture on Facebook. And, and, uh, and I said something about, you know, the, the cars they had. They had two nice cars there. And I said, hey, nice rides. And uh she responded back and she said, can you believe that my baby is, you know, 20 something years old? And I'm like, man, it just amazes you how fast the time flies. And, and so we, we, there's some things I think that we can work on. So look at this passage here. I love this next passage. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So if we take the time to thank him, and I even saw where somebody posted this past week, you know, what if the only thing we could have today was what we thank God for yesterday? That kind of is a wake up call. But do we take the time to thank God? Do we, do we take time to thank him for what he's already done? And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And so when we look at that passage, we go, you know what? That's what I need to be living by is, is taking the time to, to give God thanks, not worrying about things, but praying about things. You know, and, and one of the things I, I pray for in this year ahead for us as a church is God is going to teach us about the power of prayer. You know, and, and just how all of us need to be engaged in prayer on a regular basis. Praying for our families, praying for our church, praying for our nation, praying for our leaders, praying for our community. But not just praying, but being moved to action. And prayer is setting, setting us up for that. So here's the thing. We have to be better at recognizing the moment. We've got to be better at recognizing the moment. And I don't know about you guys. Maybe you've had those epiphany moments where all of a sudden you're, you realize, you know what? This is a cool moment. This is a cool moment. Even last week as we're going on that pheasant hunt, we're driving there in South Dakota. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a beautiful uh, place. But he said, hey, we're, go we're going to go up on this high point. And I'm looking around like, dude, there's not a lot of high points around here, you know, where we were at. 
And then I see this kind of hill, and I looked at one of the guys that was beside me. I said, I guess we're going up on that hill right there, because that's not a mountain. We're going up on that hill. And whenever we got up there, man, there was a surprise of the Missouri River and this beautiful landscape. And so it's whenever you top that hill and you, you look down, and you go, all right, here's a moment. You're watching, you know, the sun go down. We see deer, you know, feeding down along the, the banks of the river and stuff. And it was just a moment. And maybe you've been out for a walk. You, you know, you've been walking with your family or something like that. And, and you, you, you take a moment and you say, man, look at that sunset. You know, or maybe you're playing, you're doing something, you're working on something. You look over and you see your kid doing something. You go, man, that's a moment. So too often, I think what we do is we, we miss those moments. You know, we, we're, we're too busy, we're too driven, we're too focused on the next thing, and we miss those moments. And so I would just encourage you to maybe ask God to help you learn how to recognize the moment. Sometimes they sneak up on us. And we're, I'm going to talk about a few things today that may, may sound like they're out of order, but I'm just telling you, we've got to learn to recognize those moments. We've got to learn to recognize those moments with our kids, with our spouse. You know, Laurie and I were just standing here worshiping, you know, and and we were talking about, you know, we, we haven't been right there. We've sat in other places near, right there worshiping where we've sat for years, you know, since March. And we were like, you know, kind of cool moment. And so for me, you know, it was recognizing the moment. God, we get to worship, you know, kind of like we did back in March right here, you know, uh, with my bride, you know. And so, so there's things. And so God moments, here's some things. God moments can be monumental moments. I think back to last week, you know, uh, I think back to Hal Hodge baptizing you know, getting baptized and then his whole family going through the waters of baptism. That's a monumental moment, uh, you know, for their family, for our church, you know, for, for people that were watching. I had a friend from Huntsville. He said, man, that, that baptism was powerful. He said it was amazing. And so we've got to be willing to recognize that's a moment. That's a God moment. You know, there's, there's times that we go through life and, you know, we miss things because we're, we're so focused down the road that we miss what's happening around us. And I don't know about you, but there's those God moments in time. You know, but we have to be intentional about getting to those moments. But I can remember, like I said, just, you know, maybe going to something, busy, busy, busy. And I would take the time to just maybe pull aside and say, God, I just need to meet with you. And in that time, God would teach me or he would just breathe some life into me or he would encourage me in some way. And I don't know about you, but I have to make myself slow down sometimes. I can get, I can get busy doing things. And a lot of those things aren't really going to matter in the grand scheme of things. And so I had to make myself slow down and, and take time to, to just maybe listen to God. You know, God's Word says, be still and know that I am God. So maybe to take time and just be still and listen. Say, God, I just want to hear from him. Or just to be silent before him. Just to take some time to say, God, I just want to, I want to sit here and just, I just want to enjoy being in your presence. And so those God moments can be monumental moments. I think back to whenever I gave my life to Christ. It was a monumental moment. I was 19 years old. I hear the gospel. I respond by faith. I walk an aisle. I get down on my knees. I pray a simple prayer. I stood up, and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that Christ lived within me. And it was a monumental moment. It changed the whole uh, trajectory of my life. It changed everything. I think back to whenever I asked Lori to marry me. You know, I remember, you know, thinking through that and trying to plan that out. And I remember asking her to marry me, and she goes, "I don't know what to say." And I'm like, "Yes, would be nice. You know, that would be awesome." And, uh, and, and so it was one of those things where it was a monumental moment. You know, we decided, hey, you know what, we're going to spend the rest of our life together. I remember our wedding, you know, and it was a God moment. You know, we're in that ceremony, but looking across and knowing that, you know what, we're making promises and vows to each other that are going to prayerfully last a lifetime. And so far it's been 28 years. So it's, been, it's been good. And uh, so it's, been, it's awesome to think about some of those God moments. So maybe we ought to take the time to remember, what are the God moments in my life? Maybe you've never been baptized. Maybe, you, you know, there was someone last week who saw the baptism and said, you know what, I need to be baptized. I need to go public with my, you know, decision to accept Christ. I need to be baptized. Those are monumental moments. And, and so you've got to be willing to, to take these moments and, and, and build on them. Here's another one. Father, ask this. Father, help me to see the gifts, blessings, and moments in each day. That's just something I think each of us could do. That we ask that. That's a prayer, right? Father, help me. I'm talking to God. I'm saying, God, help me to recognize the gifts and the blessings and the moments in each day. And so, again, if we grow in, in prayer and we, we say, you know, God, help me to recognize that, to see that, to experience that. So what we're doing is we're asking God, God, I need your help. And so God, help me to see those things. And so one of the prayers I pray all the time, you guys hear me say it a lot probably, is God, help me to see people as you see them and help me to love people as you love them. Because that doesn't come natural, I'm just telling you. 
because we're selfish, greedy people, do I have to ask God regularly, God, help me to see people the way that you see them and help me to love people the way that you love them. Here's another one. God moments, Father, help me. And then here's the last one. Slow down for a few minutes each day to be thankful for good things in your life. So just take the time. You know, and it could be just a few minutes. Maybe you start your morning. Some of the people in here are morning people, you know, and some people in here can't do anything until about lunchtime, it seems like. But some people wake up, you know, like Tony Mess was bouncing around here this morning. Man, it's a good day. I mean, y'all think he just does that for the welcome? I'm telling you, it's like that all the time. He's like the Energizer Bunny. And, uh, but man, he wakes up, boom, I think going. You know, I can only imagine that he's going boom, 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 and then he just dies and, his, you know, he just lays down and crashes. But that guy has got energy to spare. And, uh, and so there's some people like Tony that are like that. And there's some of you that, man, it takes a few cups of coffee or whatever, you know, something to get there. But I'm saying just to find that time to literally slow down and just take a few minutes. And so what you're doing is you're recognizing the moments. God, help me to slow down, to recognize the moments. You ever been watching your kids play, you know, and you recognize the moment? You go, God, thank you for the blessing of these kids. Or maybe, maybe you're watching your spouse do what they love to do. And you go, you know what? God, you've blessed me way beyond what I deserve. And so you're watching them, and you're just, it's a moment. You, you just realize, you know what? They're, they're serving in their giftedness. They're, they're using their abilities for the kingdom. And, and so Ecclesiastes says this, there's a time for everything. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. And if you read Ecclesiastes, it goes down at a time to, uh, to, time to uh, live, a time to die, a time to whatever. And it kind of goes through this long list of things, and it kind of gets monotonous kind of over a time for this time for that time for this time for that all the way down through there and then it drops down to verse 9 and I want you to read what what the writer says here says what do people really get for all their hard work I have seen the burden God has placed on us all yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time so there's a season for everything he just got through covering that he has planted eternity in the human heart I love that but even so people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end so I concluded That there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. In other words, to make the most of this life. You know, now he, this is Old Testament. It hasn't seen the coming, you know, the coming of Jesus. But what he's saying is God has put eternity in the heart of man. That, you know what, we desire to know God. And there's a desire to, you know what, to hopefully live for eternity. We we know, you know what, I want to live, men are going to live in one of two places. A place called hell or a place called heaven. I want to be with God in a place called heaven for eternity. Like I said, we're only passing through this, this place. This is just kind of a moving through here. And, and so when we look at that passage, we realize, you know what, that God, I mean, the, the writer is saying, hey, listen, you need to make the most of the moment. You need to enjoy your time here. It says, and people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor for these gifts. These are gifts from God. It goes back to the last thing we said, you know, hey, take the time to God. Help me to, you know, enjoy the gifts, to see the gifts, to recognize them. And so here's the second thing. We've got to, en- enjoying the moment takes, takes focus. It takes focus. Enjoying the moment takes focus. We've got to, we've got to focus on things. You know, and, and I, was, I was talking with my son yesterday about, you know, a lot of times, you know, things happen and we can kind of get fatigued or, or, or weary. Um, but don't let that rob you of your focus. You know, everybody was probably watching football games yesterday. And we hear it all the time. Hey, you got to play a full 60 minutes. you got to play the whole game. Don't let fatigue rob you of your focus or of your assignment of what you're supposed to do. Because when you do, you're letting your team down. So don't ever let fatigue bother you or or rob you of your focus. And so we have to be intentional about our focus. Our focus has got to be, God, help me to stay focused on what matters most. God, help me to stay focused on eternal things. Remember in Ecclesiastes it said God has put eternity in the hearts of men. And so God, help me to stay focused on the eternal things. Help me to stay focused on those things that matter the most. Help me to stay focused on You know, where my friends are going to spend eternity. Help me stay focused on those things. And help me to stay focused on Jesus' teaching. Help me line up with his word. Look at what it says here in this passage. It says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. It's in Matthew, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't Isn't life more than just food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are can all your worries add a single moment to your life and when we read that passage there jesus that's jesus talking he's hey listen quit worrying about these things your focus is on the wrong things we're worried about money we're worried about clothes worried about food and he said hey listen that's the wrong thing to focus on focus on the kingdom of god focus on god and what god has in store for you 
Focus on God and his blessings. Focus on the things that matter the most. And so what we've got to do is we got to, if we're going to enjoy life, we've got to, we've got to learn to say, God, help me to stay focused on what matters most. And too often we're focused on fashions and fads and things that we can't take with us. You know, we, we spend a lot of time as, as Americans and as people just trying to accumulate stuff, right? We, 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 hey, we, we get this and we think, hey, that's what I want. And, man, I struggle with that as much as anybody. I'll get a certain thing that I've been working towards. I'll get that, then I'm thinking about the next thing down the road. Hey, what's the next thing? And really what we should be doing is, well, according to Jesus, is we shouldn't be so focused on clothing and food and stuff, but we should be focused on the kingdom, focused on those things that, that last for eternity. So look at this. Here's a couple things here. Enjoy the little things in life, for one day you'll look back and realize they were big things. That's just a, a statement that I saw that I love that. So enjoy the little things in life. So, you know, what, what, what are the little things? And maybe it's a nice meal with your family around a table. You know, they've said that, you know, one of the things that can really help a family bond is time around a table in conversation around a nice meal. And, and maybe for you guys, you know, you, it's, we live in the microwave age, everything's so fast and fast-paced. And when I was growing up, you know, and I see a lot of people post things about this, but when I was growing up, you know, that was one of the things you always did. You ate at home for, for supper. Number one, I don't think we could afford to eat out, and people didn't eat out all the time like they do now. But there was time put into a meal. Now, maybe it's just Salisbury steak in a, you know, in an aluminum pan or whatever. That's what we might have had. Or macaroni and cheese out of the box, you know, with the dry cheese. You know, that, whenever we get moved to Deluxe, we, we kind of stepped it up. But at least it was around a meal, and you sat around a table, and you had conversation. And so you might think, well, man, that's the old times. Look at this next statement. Enjoy today as one of the good old days you will miss in the future. See, for me, I think back to those days, and those are the good old days. And there'll be a day when you'll look back and you'll realize these are the good old days. And so we've got to be careful, you know, that we're, we're not rushing past these moments, that we're making the most of the moments. And so we've got to learn to, to enjoy the moment. So here's the next one. We need to be intentional about planning for the moment. You might think, well, Mike, I think that should have been the, the one before that. No, here's what I'm saying. There are some moments that you can't plan. They just happen. God moments are, you know, I can't plan a God moment. God plans that. And so there are times that we don't plan things out it just happens and you realize I just need to soak this up I just need to take this in I just need to enjoy the moment I need to slow down I need to smell the roses I need to slow down and enjoy life I need to slow down and get focused on what matters most but here's the thing we need to be intentional about planning for the moment I talked about asking Laurie to marry me you know what I did was I planned that out I had it all kind of thought out in my head I planned it out and I was intentional about that we had a wedding ceremony we planned that out you know, we put time into planning that out. And I, I would just say this to, for the moms and dads in the rooms. You know, don't give up on planning it out. You might say, well, Mike, I try to plan things out, and it never goes as planned. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow. Sometimes, you know, what you had planned is not as good as what God had in store, right? Maybe God had something different. You know, and, and so it's kind of like whenever you give your kids, you go buy something nice for Christmas, whatever, and you give it to them, and they want to play in the box, you know. You weren't planning on that. You know, so you got to, hey, you know what? Let them play in the box. Let them enjoy being in the box. But we've got to be, we, we got to be intentional about planning for the moment. So here's a couple things here. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Here's wisdom again, wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And so when we look at this passage here, it says, be careful how you live. Be wise. But make the most of every opportunity. And I know we could say, Mike, that's probably talking about sharing the gospel. It is. You know, it's talking about sharing the gospel with our, our family members, with our friends, you know, with our, our loved ones, with our coworkers, with those around us. So making the most of every opportunity. But it's also ma making the most of that opportunity maybe in a conversation while you're driving down the road. I heard Daniel talking about how his dad always did a great job of teaching you know, biblical truths while driving down the road or making a conversation. And I would just say to every one of you, man, that, those are teaching moments we won't get back. That we do need to be intentional about that. And so maybe whenever, you know, something is said about something, you know, your child says something, you, get, you use it as a teaching opportunity. And you look for those moments. You have to be intentional. And so we have to be intentional with our time. We have to be intentional with our time. We're all given the same amount, right? We don't get it back. So, you know, however many minutes, seconds are in a day, you know, we all get the same. And so I heard someone say, you know, time is kind of like the river. You walk down and you touch the river, 
And then if you touch it again, you'll never touch the same place twice because that, that, that water is gone. And here's the same thing in our lives. The seconds, you know, that second is gone. You know, I've joked about this many times I've gone and watched a movie and I'm like, dude, I just lost two hours of my life. I'll never get back. That bothers me. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's a bad movie. And, but there's things in our life that we've got to go, you know what, God, help me to make the most of the opportunity because I've only got so many hours in a day. So God, help me to make it about not just me, but God, help me to make it about you. Help me, help me to make it about people and about the kingdom of God. And so we've got to make the most of our time. So we have to be intentional with our time that we, we, we're, we plan it out, we think through it. Here's another one. We need to remember the principle of the path. The principle of the path. Let me kind of give you this kind of in a, a brief version or a little paraphrased version of this. Um, there's, a, there's a teaching that says, hey, listen, if you want to get to a certain place, you have to put yourself on a path that gets there. Pretty, pretty simple. And so, like, if you wanted to go to Gulf Shores, you know, you wouldn't get on, you know, I-65 North and head that way. You're on the wrong path, right? So if you wanted to go to Gulf Shores or you wanted to go to Orange Beach, what you would do is you would put yourself on I-65 South because that's the path that leads to those areas. And as you head down there, then you're going to have to take a, you know, a detour all to kind of go to where Orange Beach or Gulf Shores is at because I-65 doesn't go there. It just kind of goes in that direction. You've got to take a different path. And so what happens is we, you know, we say, hey, I want to be here. I want to do this. And we have these, these goals in our life and these certain things that we want to accomplish but the thing is, we never put ourselves on a path to get there. And so a few years ago, I was teaching a, a message on the principle of the path. And one of the places in my life, you know, like I said, I love to hunt. And so I've always uh, loved outdoor stuff. Even whenever I was a kid, we would go to the library, you know, uh, you know in, in elementary school. I would always go and get the sporting books, like something on hunting or something on guns or knives or whatever. That was just, that's, I've been that way ever since I was a kid. So I love the outdoors and stuff. You know, and so anyway, I can remember my teacher comes and say, hey, Mike, there are other books in this library. Why don't you read some of them? Why don't you go do some of those? And so for me, it's always been a big deal. And I remember years ago, whenever I was a little kid, there was an archway in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, that I thought was the coolest thing. And there's a picture of it uh, right here. And so I remember seeing that, and I thought, man, that is the coolest thing in the world. So that was, for me, was kind of a one day I want to stand under that archway there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, that's kind of a bucket list. So it was one of those things where I wanted to go there, and I was talking about it. And so I, I was talking about, hey, you know, these are places that I want to go, but you know what? I've never gotten there, and mainly because I've never got on a path that goes there. Does that make sense? And so after the service, Laurie walks up to me, and she goes, hey, listen, why don't we go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming? Why don't we plan a trip? And I said, man, that's a great idea. And she said, so here's the thing. We practice what we preach, right? You know what I'm saying? So we, we literally put together a trip we planned it out and it took a while again we were intentional with our time and so we we uh got the boys got them pumped about it they were excited about it so we ended up flying from Birmingham to Dallas I mean to uh to a Colorado and we went to a Colorado Rockies game they had more home runs than they'd ever hit it seemed like that night it was an incredible game then we drive up into Wyoming and we make our way up into Yellowstone and then we end in Jackson Hole Wyoming and, and so th there were the arches and whenever we drove them like dude there they are and all it is is a bunch of antlers that they made, but it's kind of a cool thing. And for an outdoorsman, it was like, dude, that's awesome. So I, actually, we had our picture made there, but it was in a photo album, and I couldn't mess up the scrapbook that Lori had put together to get it out. But there's a picture of Lori and I standing right here. We're standing right there, and we're like, you know what? We made it there. But we had to put ourselves on that path. We had to put ourselves on that path. And I'm telling you, there's some of you that you say, hey, listen, I want to make great memories. I want to go places like that. But you don't put yourself on a path to get there. And so not only do we have to be intentional with our time, you've got to be intentional with your steps, with which path you choose. You want to be a great mom? You want to be a great dad? You've got to put yourself on a path that gets there by understanding God's word, being a great, working at being a great parent. Pastor Daniel did an incredible job last week talking about parenting. And so taking those, those principles and applying them to our life, and when you put yourself on that path, and all of a sudden you begin to go, you know what? That's where I'm headed. I'm working towards that. You know, whatever it might be, whatever, wherever you want to be. Maybe you want to lose weight, then put yourself on a path that gets there. Eating less, exercising more, it will get you there. If you want to, hey, I want to, I want to get a degree, you know what? Start, enroll for some classes. Put yourself on that path. So you've got to be willing to do that. And then here's the next one, last one. Remembering special moments prepares us for the next moment. See, I, I love to reminisce. Uh, I love to reminisce. And, um, and so remembering is, is one of those things where I like to, I tell stories from, from way back, and, and uh, we've always done that uh, w as a family. I would, 
I'll go somewhere and man, it triggers memories, you know, and, uh, and I'll tell stories and stuff about that. But we've got to remember special moments. We've got to take time to celebrate those things. And, and I think it's always important. For years ago, I had a, uh, an opportunity. We were teaching and we were teaching on Father's Day. And so I wanted to go back and kind of go back to where, you know, I was born and raised uh, down in, I was born in Jackson, Alabama, raised in, you know, Wagerville until the second grade. Then we moved to Mobile. And so I kind of wanted to go revisit those. So we literally went through Jackson, got it all on video, did a little teaching there. Then we went to the house uh, where I uh, grew up, you know, in until the second grade had been taken down. There's an extra log cabin. They had moved there now and kind of a historical marker deal, uh, I guess, because I'm so old. But anyway, uh, so I went there. And then we went down to the church where I was, and I asked the lady, hey, do you mind if we go into the sanctuary? She didn't know who I was. And I said, you know, I got saved here. I surrendered to the ministry here. And I kind of revisited all that. And so by revisiting that reminded me, you know, of, hey, making these moments special. And I, and I remember, you know, in the sanctuary, I was sitting over here. I got down. I walked. I came to the front here. I remember the night that I surrendered to the ministry. I was sitting right along there, you know, and I got up and I came down and, and talked with my pastor. And, uh, and, and so it was. It was special moments. I went up and stood in the pulpit and actually taught from that pulpit in that video. But I was thinking back to the very first time I ever preached from the pulpit. And just remembering those moments, man, you know, it prepares us for the next moment because we start thinking about, hey, these are special times. These are special opportunities, special moments. And so by remembering things, it often helps us prepare for that next one. Look at what it says in Philippians. It says, now, dear brothers and uh, sisters, and one final thing, fix your thought on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Isn't that a great passage? Thinking about the good times, thinking about the good things. You know, sometimes we have to unpack some of the bad things in life because we need to, we have to revisit them. We have to unpack them. We have to kind of forgive or either let go or let some healing take place. But it's, I think it's always good to remember the good old days. And that may seem old fashioned to you, but maybe we take the time to remember what it was like to, when we went on that first date with our spouse or whenever we, I, you know, we ask our spouse to marry us or whatever it might be, or maybe it was a, a trip to the beach or something like that, but you, you take time to remember those. And so I would, I would say this, I think it's important to return to a special place. You know, you, you take the time, you return to a special place. Maybe you go back and visit, you know, you go back and you just check it out. You return to that special place and you, you go back and you, you sit down in that chair or you go back and you stand in that pulpit or you, go, you climb that mountain wherever you were at, whatever it might be, but you return to that special place and you, and you reminisce, you think about that. And as, you, as you're letting that marinate, you know, you go, you know what, There's, God has blessed me and God, I want you to give me eyes to see the new opportunities. Here's another one. Share a special memory with someone. Share a special memory. Tell somebody about it. Tell stories. I can remember whenever we would go to the Smoky Mountains. Growing up, we went every year for like nine years to the Smoky Mountains. Same place, the same life. And, and so when Laurie and I, we took our three boys, we were going through there, and I was telling stories to my boys about the trips that I had been on and what we had done and what we had experienced and where my dad fell in the creek and all that kind of stuff. And so we're driving down through there, and a few minutes later I heard, hey, Daddy, tell us another story. And so I started thinking back through different stories and telling them. And so here's the thing. Not only do we need to revisit some of those stories, we need to share those with our kids. Sit down with a photo album and walk through those memories. Share with them what was special to you. And who knows, maybe they, they may hear you talk about your faith or your, your spouse and go, you know what, that's what I want. But take the time to celebrate you know, these stories and to share a special memory with someone. Tell someone what it's like to, to receive Christ. You know, tell them what it was like to go through the waters of baptism. Tell them what it was like to experience, you know, marriage that is lasting. Take the time to tell those stories. And here's a couple things here. Ask someone, ask God to help you see the blessings in this day. Maybe just say, God, help me to, help me to see the blessings in today. I'm too always in a rush, always thinking about the next thing. God, help me see the blessings in today. Here's another step. Slow down and enjoy those special moments this week. Maybe take the time this week and you say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down. Now, don't get so slow that you don't get anything done, but I'm just saying slow down, take a few minutes, and think through, what are the moments from last week? Was there something special last week? 
Was there something really neat? Take time to celebrate that. Give God thanks. And here's the last one. Plan a special moment with your family. You know, take, take some time with your family and plan that special moment. You know, it may not go as you plan, but you know what? It may be better than you plan. Because when God shows up, it can be monumental. It can be something special. And you go, you know what? God, thank you for the blessings in my life. So we got to be intentional about taking the time and making the most of every moment. I want to ask you if you would just to bow your heads and close your eyes. And maybe you just ask, you know, God, am I too busy? Am I rushing past these God moments, these monumental moments? God, is my focus on the wrong things? Lord, I, I want to ask you, if you will, will you forgive me? Just, just say, God, I want, I want to ask you, if you will, to forgive me for being so busy, being so driven, maybe distracted. And God, help me to focus on the, the moments. The moments with my kids, they're growing up so quick. The moments with my spouse, you bless me with. The moments with coworkers and friends. But making the most, God, help me to make the most of the moment. Maybe there's some of you here, maybe some of you there watching online that you've never had that moment where you put your faith in Christ. You've never received Jesus for salvation. You've been in church, you've been religious, but man, you've never received Jesus Christ for salvation. And maybe that's the moment that God has prepared for you today. And I want to give you that opportunity, if you would, right where you are, you can just bow your head, close your eyes, say, Jesus, I want to ask you to forgive me of the sin I've committed. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all missed it by a mile. So, Jesus, I want to ask you, will you come into my life? Will you be my leader? Will you be my Lord? Will you be first place in my life? And will you teach me how to live for you? And I can tell you his answer is yes. So, Jesus, just say, Jesus, will you come into my life? Will you forgive me of my sins? I want to quit living the way I've been living. That's repentance. And, Jesus, I want to turn to you. And I trust you with all the faith that I have. You might be wondering how much faith does it take, all that you've got. Grant that if it's the, the size of a mustard seed, God will use it. He will bless it. And he'll give you life. And so maybe that's your moment today. Share that with someone. We want to celebrate that moment. We want to celebrate through the waters of baptism with you. And so we would love to be a part of that. So if you've made a decision to accept Christ and you've never gone through the waters of baptism, let that be your next step. We would love to celebrate that moment with you. Father, I thank you for meeting with us today. God, I thank you for the fact that you love us. And God, that you have planned out the moments in our life. God, you've planned out our days. You know how long we'll live. We have no clue. God, but you have special things in place all along that timeline. God, special opportunities. Help us to make the most of the opportunity. God, help us to make the most of each day. And God, help us to look for those opportunities. To recognize them. To celebrate them. To enjoy them. And at times, sit down, look through maybe a few pictures and remember them so that it'll prepare us for the next moment. God, thank you for meeting with us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you just made a decision to follow Christ, we want you to know it's the greatest decision you've ever made. And we want to help you with your next steps. If you text the phrase, my decision, to 94000, we would love to get connected to you as you start this journey with Christ. Now we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings to God. I want to encourage you to trust God completely in this area of your life. We do that by giving. We give from where we have been given. Now, we've made this super simple. You just see a link on the screen and in the comments section below. It will lead you to our journey giving page. There you can return God's tithe and our offering. If you need help learning how to give online, we have several tutorial videos on our YouTube page. Your giving allows us to continue to make an increasing impact for the gospel. So take the next step right now. Allow God to bless your obedience. Again, thank you so much for joining us online today. We will see you right back here next week.